Welcome to Healthy Conversations, sharing the knowledge, experience, stories, and the wisdom of herbalists and other natural healers with your host, Stephen Horn. Today's guest, Paula Rochelle. Hi, and welcome again to another episode of Healthy Conversations. With me today is Dr. Paula Rochelle, a board certified naturopathic doctor in the American Naturopathic uh, Association. And she is one of 10 in the United States that currently holds a board certification in naturopathic endocrinology and is currently the only board certified functional neurologist recognized by the ANA. Now she is got a book that she's done called The Other Side of Trauma. It's not out yet, but it will be out soon. And that's why I reached out to her because I am uh, for almost 30 years now, I've recognized that there's a huge link between trauma and people's physical health and that working with trauma is one of the things we do to help. So welcome, Paula. Why don't we start off with anything else you want to say about yourself? Because I know you have a whole bunch of other credentials as well. No, you made me look very good. Thank you so much. Okay, welcome. Well, let's talk a little bit about what trauma is so people can you know, understand what, what we're talking about. Absolutely. You know, trauma is different for different people, but it's basically the result of experiencing an event um, that has a physiological and or psychological effect, uh, an emotional effect on people. Um, so everybody's trauma is unique. It's based on your set of experiences, perhaps your ancestry, um, and what your epigenetic profile looks like um, at the moment that that trauma occurs to you. Right. And so give us some examples of things that traumatize people. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> there's a lot. I know there's an awful lot of things that can cause trauma. We could, we could spend hours on, on that, but a lot of things will traumatize uh, most people. Uh, for me, it was uh, crashing an airplane. Right. That's pretty traumatic. That was, that was pretty traumatic for me. For one of the little guys I take care of out of Canada, it was actually prenatal trauma and the way that the neuron migration occurred before he even got here. That was his trauma. I think one of the greatest traumas that I work with is the trauma of betrayal, um, you know, because that's a very personal trauma. Uh, but there, right. there are many forms of trauma. And um, what's trauma for you? May for, not well, be for example, yeah, for example, being hospitalized can be traumatic. I mean, yes, most obviously having some kind of abuse in your childhood or neglect in your childhood or, or others, you know, seeing something that was extremely frightening. And a lot of people, when they're traumatized as children, we wouldn't think that those events are traumatizing because as adults, we wouldn't find it that way. But for children, they are. You know, that happened to me, actually. I was very young and uh, my father was ill and uh, he had cancer. He uh, laid and suffered for two and a half years before he died. And until that time, I had an amazing social network. You know, I was, uh, might have been a little spoiled, not sure, but I was the only grandchild on all four sides. And I had all oh, wow. I had all of my grandparents and all but one of my great grandparents. And every Friday night, we went to grandma's house and life was pretty good. And, and then my little sister came along and that's another story. Life wasn't as right. great, but it, but it was okay. So when my father became ill, my life changed dramatically. And there were some things that happened. Um, one of them was the doctors told my father that he was ill and had cancer. And they told my mother, but neither of them knew the other one was aware of it. So what happened is when my mom was by herself, she would cry and my dad was upset. But when they were together, they smiled. And it's very confusing to a child. And nobody right. would explain it. And so when he passed away, by that time, had disassociated from all of my grandparents. And so there was no social network whatsoever. And my great grandmother came to me and she basically said, this is the way life is going to be the rest of your life. Put your big old panties on and deal with it. And you know, I thought that's what you were supposed to do. From that day on, 
until today, only ever remember having one conversation with my mother regarding my father or his death. We never acknowledged his birthday. We never acknowledged any that he ever existed. And for me, that was a trauma that I didn't oh. recognize. Uh, you know, because yeah, I that was actually young. is that actually is traumatic because I've worked with quite a number of people who lost a loved one and they were never allowed to grieve. Mm -hmm. And if if you aren't able to go through the grieving process, that leaves you stuck in a traumatic state inside of you that you don't recover from until you do exactly. allow yourself to go through the grieving process. Exactly. And I'm sure that you've observed as a naturopath, the way I have as an herbalist, trauma doesn't just affect people psychologically. I mean, obviously it can contribute to a lot of things like anxiety and depression and being irritable and all those sorts of things, behavioral problems and so forth, but it can also contribute to physical health problems, right? Most definitely. Um, I traveled to Peru a number of years ago to try and understand how um, the medicine men in the mountains actually heal people. Was it the herbs of the land that they used or was it, you know, did they have some, you know, weird tools they used or how did they heal? These people were untouched. They lived at 18,500 feet and were untouched by Western civilization. And I was awed to learn that they only heal the emotional realm because everything happens in that emotional template before it manifests in the physiology. So I had a young woman who came into me in chronic pain, just chronic, chronic pain, and had been to numerous doctors and no one could figure her out. And um, a little bit of serotonin helped the pain, you know, that was the easy part. And then I said to her, now we have to deal with the more difficult part. And that's your emotional trauma. And initially she ran from me. She said, I'll let you know when I'm ready to do that. And I said, okay. And she said, I can't do it before the holidays. I said, okay, fine. It's your time. I'm just here to help. And so she came in after the holiday, sat in my chair. And the first thing she said to me is, I'm going to throw up. And I said, oh, no, 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 not on my time. And <laughs> so we regulated that gut brain axis that was affecting her emotionally. And it's, it's really turned out to be quite a story. She had been abused significantly, repeatedly as a child by a family member, and she never dealt with it. She lived within the four walls of her house. She never went outside. She never went to the store. And as we worked and healed that trauma, she was able to begin to live a normal life. And it was so exciting to watch. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I learned uh, to be a little bit careful about introducing that topic when someone came to my herb shop years ago and said, I don't have much money. And then she lists, rattled off a whole list of health problems she's had. She says, what do you recommend? And I, I gave her a couple of basic suggestions of things she could do to improve her overall health. And then I said, I, I've never seen anyone who has that kind of multiple serious health problems who abused as a child. Because I thought, okay, we'll, we'll do some emotional healing work with her for free. You know, it doesn't cost me anything to work with her on that. And she goes, I was, and I'm not going to talk about it. And she left the store and she never came back because sometimes people aren't willing to deal with that. So I often start off with the physical remedies. But what I find when people have a multiple health problems, that just are difficult to resolve. You can only get so far with physical remedies and then you run into a brick wall. Yes. And until you deal with the trauma, you can't get past that. I would agree. I would agree wholeheartedly. Um, I worked with uh, children who had been traumatized from third world countries uh, and adopted into the United States. My goal was to keep them from being institutionalized. And I was working with wow. the laboratory. And, um, you know, I kept seeing these two areas of the brain come up over and over again. It was the amygdala and the hippocampus. And right. I, realized, I realized if I could just regulate these two areas of the brain, um, you know, I, I could get so much further. If I could fix that emotional trauma um, first, then I could get so much further with the physiology. And um, I was very honored to work with a Russian radio physicist who helped me develop remedies to regulate those two areas of the brain. And it's amazing what they can do. Um, I, I've done some work with Biesel van der Kolk, studied some of, uh, with some of his, his work. And one of the things, I guess two of the things that I really learned from him is number one, 
retelling the trauma uh, doesn't do anybody any good. Number one, rarely is it accurate. You know, the way it's stored in the brain, it's stored in different pieces. And when that comes back together, um, a lot of times people will embellish that or the more they tell it, the more they embellish it. But it's, it's rarely accurate. And the second thing is, if you continue to tell that story, it entrains it in the brain and it just makes it worse. And so I tell yeah. people, I'm recognizing that you've had some emotional trauma. I don't need to know what that is. I don't need right. to hear your story. But if you would allow me, I would like to help you with that. And mm. using that approach seems to be, uh, it works for me. That's good. Well, one thing I do is is I don't uh, let people dwell on the story. I, I go to, and how did that make you feel? And how did yeah. that make you feel? I try to get them to get in touch with the emotions yeah. and let them cry, you know, let them express anger or even do exercises to help them express the anger or the hurt or to go through, you know, the sobbing and, you know, wailing of the grieving process or other things like that. Because I find you have to process it emotionally through your body. Just talking about it and going over it in your brain doesn't do any good at all. Exactly. And that's one of the things I think is a problem with um, a lot of counseling and psychology is because they spend a lot of time trying to work on it rationally. And it's not rational. There's nothing exactly. rational about the, the trauma. And each person's trauma is different and how they need to process it to get well is different. Um, and, right. you know, my healing process is different than anybody else's. Um, Ex yeah, exactly. Uh, it's, it's, it's unique. It's always unique. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned you help create some, I guess there are products, are they like uh, homeopathic like, or what, what they are that help uh, reset the amygdala and the hippocampus? Well, if you will remember in your reading, Benjamin Franklin said the medicine of the future will be frequency medicine. And so these are truly frequency products. Um, we've realized that every organ in the body has a signature or a frequency to it. And if we can identify that signature and set the normal frequency or signature of that organ in the extracellular space, the organ will remember it, whether it's cellular memory or whether it just entrains to it. I'm not certain, but in doing so, you know, the amygdala is involved, you know, a lot with anxiety and fear. And so if we can get that frontal lobe calmed down and get rid of the anxiety and fear, um, then we've got, you know, we, we're affecting the entire being, you know, the, you know, you're affecting the gut, the emotions, the hormones, the, and, and so forth. And the same with the hippocampus, and that's where memory, of course, is encoded. And so what we've learned by doing these frequency remedies is that the memory remains intact, okay? It doesn't change the memory. I can now oh. talk to you about the trauma without the trauma eliciting a physiological response. Right, because you've diffused the emotion associated with the trauma, exactly. right? You don't, it does, it, as my, my understanding of this, and you probably know a lot more about this than I do, but as my understanding of it is when we have something that triggers us into that fight, flight, or freeze mode, the amygdala kind of hijacks our brain and causes us to react instinctively with anger, yeah. fear, all these different emotional responses, which can be life-saving in a, an emergency. But yes. afterwards, you have to do something to discharge all that and let go of it, or you remain stuck. And anytime something triggers you a memory of that event, it will trigger you back into that illogical, irrational, emotional state exactly. until you deal with it. Yes, that is. So we all know that people have buttons. In fact, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know anybody who doesn't have buttons, right? We've all had at least some minor I trauma, right? we all have trauma. I oh, think yeah. every one of us has had trauma. Whether right. we acknowledge it or not, that's another story. Right. But we all have our triggers, our buttons that, you know, somebody says something and they don't mean anything bad, but it just gets us into a sudden, suddenly we're flooded with emotions and we can't think straight. 
but I think people who we label as having, you know, personality disorders or being mentally ill are often just people who have just tons of buttons, tons of triggers that are constantly throwing them into that state. Would you agree with that? Or Yes, most definitely. And I think that, you know, most people, trauma is accumulative. So if you have a trauma, right. upon a trauma, upon a trauma, upon a trauma, then pretty soon you're in total fight, flight, or freeze mode, and that affects the whole being. And so, you know, how I perceive the next trauma is based on all of my experiences to that point. And right. so I'm going to be in constant hypervigilance. You know, I call it looking out for the saber toothed tiger, um, yeah. trying to, you know, where am I going to be attacked next? Yeah. And as you say, you know, that affects your digestion, that affects your heart rate and blood pressure and a whole host of other physiological factors that can contribute to you being sick. Exactly. High blood pressure, indigestion, constipation, diarrhea, <laughs> all kinds of symptoms can come from that. I find today I have clients who come to me many times with um, hypertension, elevated blood pressure, and um, they've been on six and seven and eight different kinds of pharmaceuticals for blood pressure. And it's incredible because I work from the neck up and their blood pressure dissipates, you know, and it's like, this is not, uh, you know, we don't need another aldosterone blocker. We need something that's going to regulate that hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis in the brain and calm yep. down that fight or flight response. Right. Well, Paula, thank you for sharing all this information with people. And I hope that they recognize the importance of this. We're going to put links to uh, Paula below where you can check out our book as soon as it's available. And also, I assume you have a website and some other social media that they can uh, get a hold of you if they need additional help. So thanks so much for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. I've enjoyed it a great deal, Stephen. Yep. Okay, wait a second. So we need to stop. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to catch future episodes of Healthy Conversations. Help us educate others by sharing this video, and please feel free to share your own thoughts, comments, and questions below. To learn more, check out the links below.